Let's take a look at the unit LM40 laser distance meter. This unit substitutes for a tape measure or ruler for measuring distances across surfaces across a room for calculating area of a room or a box or a volume that is the interior volume of a box or of a room and it also lets you take measurements indoors outdoors height of objects direct and indirect measurement using P Pythagoras, direct Pythagoras, and indirect Pythagoras measurements. So let's take a look inside the box. Now, very simple, there isn't much to it, just a simple cardboard box. The instructions are on a sheet, front and back. The instructions are actually in uh, very good English, and these are actually uh, very easy to follow. So. Uh, my compliments to the company unit or uni t not sure how you pronounce them but the company has written good instructions that are clear and easy to understand thank you and inside the box we have the laser distance meter the lm40 in a, a plastic blister pack there is no protection inside this box so um, if you're going to store this unit in a box be sure to Handle it carefully and gently. Any shock or excessive vibration can damage this unit. It is kind of fragile. And of course, this is the tray for it, which is just a plastic a blister pack. There's no padding. And there is a gray cloth carrying bag. Again, the carrying bag is good to carry it, but it's not waterproof or vibration or impact resistant. So if you're going to bring this LM40 laser distance meter outdoors, you should probably consider putting it inside a padded protective case. Let's go ahead and put this box back together and let's turn on the LM40 and let's go over uh, some of the basic functions of the buttons as well as a, a, a brief overview of things. Now, uh, again, the instructions are very good. I only found a bit of a discrepancy in the instructions here, and that is when you look at the instructions, it details a bunch of measurement modes, as you see here on the screen. So uh, what is missing, well, let me just tell you what's included. You can do single measurement, that is a measurement of uh, distance here from the front of the unit, or distance measurement, length measurement, including the back of unit. So if the meter itself is four inches long, then if you're measuring six inches distance, then it'll be the six inches plus the four inches for the unit. But if you're measuring starting from the front, it'll only be the six inches measured to the item. So you'll see more of that in a moment here. But you've got single measurement, so you can measure distance to an object. You've got continuous measurement, where if you press down on the red DIST button, it will constantly check distance and as you move the laser distance meter closer or further away from the measurement point, your distance will change. And then there's area measurement, which measures length by width of a room or the inside of a box, for example, to calculate the square footage, square inches, or square meters. And there's volume measurement, which lets you calculate the length, width, and height of a room or of the inside of a box. And it'll give you a measurement in cubic, uh, cubic inches, cubic feet, or cubic meters. And there are uh, three Pythagoras measurements. There's direct Pythagoras measurement. And then there is indirect, where you have two angles. And the reference angle in the middle, your 90 degree reference. And you have another indirect Pythagoras measurement where you're measuring two angles. And then your 90 degree reference right here at the top. So the unit itself seems to be lacking two measurement functions. The measurement functions are mentioned in the instruction sheet as auto horizontal measurement and also auto vertical measurement. There are no such measurements on the operating controls or the firmware of the item, so of the uh, laser distance meter. Let's turn it on and let's 
begin to do some measurements. Anyways, the sheet here has more detailed information about the, the measurement capabilities, the error rate, the operating temperature, and all of that. And if you get any particular error codes on the screen, it tells you what it's all about. And so let's go ahead and put the instruction sheet away and take a look here. Quick look. On the back of the unit, we have a battery cover, and this takes AAA batteries. So it just so happens that we've got rechargeable batteries in here, nickel metal hydride. But as you can see here, there's a descriptive label. So it's the unit, and it gives you information about the laser that's in here. So. You can definitely use this for indoor or outdoor usage, just that if you're using this for outdoors, be aware that bright sun, sunlight, fog, dust, it can obscure the beam, in which case you might not be able to see it outdoors. Indoors, the red be laser beam, the laser dot should be quite visible. And again, this is the model LM40. So when you Power it on, notice, hit the DIST button, hold it down, and it powers on. It powers on into the measurement of meters by default. And also, you notice that if for the measurement that it's doing, it's doing it starting from the back of the unit. So whatever measurement you make, you know, factor in the length of the device itself. So if this is 5 inches, if you're measuring... 11 inches to something, it'd be 11, uh, the 11 inches, out of that 11 inches, five of it will be the actual meter. So it'll be an actual six inches to your target, plus the five inches of the unit, giving you 11. If you went ahead and, and uh, press the button here, where it says uh, the unit, if you press the unit button quickly and let go, notice what happens. It changed it, so now it is starting to do the measurement from the front. So there are times when you want to go ahead and do your measurement of a uh, room or a box starting from the front. So uh, say, for example, if you have this inside a box and you're trying to measure a uh, dimension of the box that is uh, too short, for example, then you might want to just change that. There'll be an example of that uh, coming up in one of the other videos. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and look a little more at this unit here. Uh, please pardon the glare from the room lights here. So anyway, um, as you see, we have the battery indicator, which shows it's fully charged. Model number up here. And this is the little icon of the unit where it tells you it's starting the measurement from the front of the unit or from the back. And so when you power on the unit, the distance will be listed in terms of meters, but also it'll be in distance measurement mode. Now, when you start seeing other, other icons show up over here, then it means it's going to be in another operating mode. To change operating modes, you have to hit the function button. But anyways, as you see, the unit button goes ahead and changes between front measurement and rear measurement. So we're going to go ahead and just leave it at front measurement for now. The clear button clears your readings. Every time you press it, it'll run back through the readings and clear each previous reading. This middle button is a log button. It shows you the, the entries that have been uh, scanned so far in terms of the distance measurements. This is a mute button for the internal speaker. And this is a plus minus button. If you press this button after you've had a measurement, once you press it and you see a plus on the screen over here, then every subsequent measurement that you are going to be taking, it will have a running sum or running total of your measurements. Now, if you hit the button one more time, you'll see a negative symbol, a minus symbol come up on the screen. At that point, any subsequent measurements will be subtracted from the previous measurements. So, for example, if you had a measurement of 10 meters, and you press this plus button, and you see a plus on the screen, you measure another surface, and there's another 6 meters, then your total will now be 16 meters. If you hit the 
button again and get a minus or negative on a screen and you measure a distance of five, for example, or whatever that distance is, that will be subtracted from that amount that you measured previously. So uh, let's go ahead and run through some of the functions. And uh, oh, let's see here. Okay, so on a unit, for example, if we hold the unit button down, we have our units now, measurement units in feet. You hold it down one more time, it'll be in inches. Hold it down one more time, it'll be in feet and inches. Hold it down once again, and it goes back to the default reading of meters. Now, uh, let me go ahead and press the function button. Now, you notice we have a blinking, we have a blinking uh, figure here. So it shows one leg of a uh, rectangle. So if you hit the DIST button, you notice the laser is on, but if you don't take a measurement anytime soon, the laser will shut off to save battery power. In which case, if you hit the DIST button again, it turns the laser back on and it'll be ready for measurement. Then if you press the DIST button one more time, see, now it turned off. If I press the DIST button, turns the laser on, and I press it again, it does a reading. And our first surface that we measured is, is uh, 0 0.062 of a meter. Now if I press it again, the DIST button, since the laser did not turn off, if I press it, it does another reading. So here, this first icon is going to be for area measurement. And so the length times the width gives us a area of 0 0.004 square meters. Now let's go ahead and press the function button again. And it clears the settings. It's still on area measurement. Now if we press it one more time, we have a box or a cube here. And this measures your three dimensions, your length, width, and depth for volume measurement. That is the internal volume of the box or if you're measuring length, width, and depth, or height of a room, it'll give you the total, the total volume of the room in cubic meters. Now, of course, um, let's go ahead and take a measurement, and uh, we'll see here. Now, let me go push it across the room. So we have a laser on, and then this way, Okay, and then let's run onto the floor. Okay, so we have our three measurements now. So just as a test, we had three took three quick measurements um, simulating uh, length, width, and height. And so we've got a uh, sample measurement here of 1.115 uh, cubic meters. Okay, now. If I were to press the unit button, notice it'll change the meters to cubic feet. Press it again, and it changes it to cubic feet, but in this case, it shows uh, inches and fractions of inches. Press it again, and here we have the same thing displayed in, in uh, different values. So, but basically, after you have a valid reading, if you press the unit button and hold it down, it'll flip between meters and a couple of different displays of uh, inches and feet. So uh, we're back at meters here, and let's continue on. If we go ahead and press the function button again, as it clears the readings, and it's still on the volume measurement, press it again. And now this triangle with the angle at the top, this is your direct Pythagoras measurement. And let's press it again. Now we're at indirect Pythagoras measurement where we're taking an angle and then a 90 degree reference and then another angle. And now we're at 
the second indirect Pythagoras measurement, where it's measuring the bottom leg, the bottom angle, and another angle. And then the third and last reading will be the 90 degree reference. Press it again. I'm oh, sorry. Function, okay. Press the function one more time, and we're back at area measurement, at length and width. Now, if you want to get back to the beginning, where it's measuring just straight distance, just hit the clear button. And now we're back at the beginning, where we can measure just straight distance. And again, same thing applies. If you take a, a measurement, say, uh, from here to the uh, from here to the wall, I'm going to be able to hit the button. Now notice that distance measured is 0 0.564 meters. If I go ahead and press the unit button, hold it down, it measures out as 1.850 feet. Hold it down again, or it's, that same measurement is expressed as 22 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Press the unit button one more time, and it's 1 foot 10 inches and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Hold it one more time, and we're back at the meters. And so this uh, here is a brief introduction to the buttons and to the functions of the LM40. And so, oh, one, let me just do this thing here. Hit the clear button, and that clears the readings. And I've hit the log button. Nothing, because I've cleared everything. So let me take a reading. Press the button. Read. Read. Now if I go ahead and press log, nothing. No. Anyways, let me go ahead and uh, shut this unit off, and uh, we'll go ahead and conclude this video. Uh, before we go, let's mention, you notice there is a bubble level over here. This bubble level tells us if uh, we are more or less aligned straight uh, with what we're measuring uh, level, that is. So if you're setting your point, to measure the indirect Pythagoras, having your having your bubble exactly in the middle is important because any kind of measurement error in terms of your angle, that is not setting your 90 degree reference point properly, is going to cause errors in your indirect Pythagoras. So again, uh, when you're doing indirect Pythagoras measurement, it's very important that you get your uh, angle correct, that you have it as close to 90 degrees as possible, you know, your reference. But also on top of that, as you make your measurement, where you press your DIST button and activate your laser, if you're measuring a point on the wall, for example, you want to make sure that you hold your hand steady and you take your measurement. If you can, try to hold this on something stationary like a chair or a box or something or even a pole uh, in order to hold your hand steady while you're making this measurement. If you're making multiple measurements around the room it's important to make sure that you're doing it from a good solid reference point uh, otherwise your actual measurements may be inaccurate and might be off. Okay well let's Go on to the next video. Thank you for watching.